fans pour into the stadiums by the thousands to see the final game of the college football year. The LSU Tigers are playing the Texas Longhorns, and the stadium is filled like New York City right before the ball drops. It is a little chilly out, but overall a great day for football. Both teams' players dreamed of this day since they were little kids and are going to put it all on the line. This day very well could be the day that NFL teams decide whether or not to draft you to their team. None of this was a concern for LSU Tigers quarterback Jack Ronalds, since he was almost guaranteed to be a top-round pick after his record-breaking season, going 10-0, passing for over 6,000 yards and completing 81% of his passes, and scoring 60 touchdowns. This game was a nail-biter going into the fourth all the way up to the two-minute mark in the fourth quarter. The LSU Tigers had the ball. The game tied 31-31 with two minutes remaining to take the game away from the Longhorns. First and ten at their own 30-yard line. Jack drops back into, shot, into the shotgun position. The ball is snapped and almost immediately he fires the pass to Torrey Jackson for a 15-yard game. The clock ticks down to one minute 35 seconds remaining. After getting a little shaken up, Jack hands the ball off to his trusted running back, Devin Patterson, who carries the ball for an 8-yard game. Now only 50 seconds remaining on the opponent's 48-yard line, Jack dro drops back, fires the ball to Troy Brown on a slant, who catches it but fails to get out of bounds in time, bringing Jack and the LSU Tigers down to their opponent's 35-yard line with 15 seconds left to play. Jack realizes this will most likely be the last play of the game, so he decides to call a timeout. Quickly, Jack sprints to the sideline to discuss his potentially final college play before he goes to the NFL. Coach Tate gives Jack a huge hug and says to him, You've taken my team so far and always put the team over yourself, and now there's just one play left. Whether you do Whatever you do, don't take a sack or force a bad throw. Hang on to the ball until you absolutely must get rid of it. You are the best player I've ever had the privilege of coaching. Go out there and take it. You deserve it. Jack gets back to the field after a timeout, and that felt like it took him a millennium. Jack quickly took the snap, allowing his receivers time to get to the end zone, knowing it was all or nothing. There, was no, there were no timeouts left. He quickly looked left and right as defenders came in on him like an elevator door but he stood there cool and calm like any quarterback should. Finally, one of his receivers got open and he lobbed it up for him. The ball flew up into the air, but before Jack was able to see what had happened, he felt a huge hit to his legs. He heard the crowd screaming and desperately wanted to see what happened, but he couldn't. He just couldn't get up. He looked down at his leg where he felt the impact, and he could see a bone sticking out twisted. The uproar from the fans immediately stopped as they too realized exactly what happened. Jack, who was possibly the most promising player to ever play the game, was down and based on the look of the injury, it looked like he'd never be able to run again, let alone play the game he loved. Coach Tate sprints onto the field with Gatorade dripping all over his body, mixing in with tears that he was shredding after seeing what happened to his quarterback. The crowd was quite soundproof, like a quiet soundproof room. At at a time when the stadium usually experiences extreme happiness and joy, everyone was just in a somber mood. No one was celebrating. This had to be the longest few minutes anyone there had ever felt. Finally, a stretcher came onto the field, picked up the helpless body, and started to drive out. Jack gave the thumbs up as, an ex as encouragement, but everyone there knew it would be the last time they ever got to see their beloved hometown hero play. He had it all going from the fans, the stats, and soon the professional career. Then it all dwindled away after one big hit that would never be forgotten by anyone that witnessed it. Nothing quite compared to it. Jack didn't remember much when he woke up the next morning. He looked around to see where he was. It seemed like an unusual surrounding he'd never been before. But looking at the setup, it looked like a hospital room. Everything suddenly came back, came back to him when he saw a sports center in the morning. The report of his injury was played every five minutes like it was a cover story. After a while, Jack just turned off the TV since he couldn't take it anymore. The doctors came into the room and informed him that they had done surgery, but he would most likely never be able to play football again because one hit would destroy his legs. This did not stop Jack. He believed he could make the comeback that seemed impossible. Every day at physical therapy, Jack would give everything he had. When the therapist asked him to do something, he always do double. About three months later, Jack was able to walk again and start to do things for himself. 
Tonight was supposed to be the night. He knew it wasn't because of the unfortunate final play. He kept thinking to himself, if only I threw the ball sooner. We might not have won the game, but at least, at least I get to live my dream. All the hard work that I put in, getting up at 5 a.m., working out to be the best I could be, just to see it end like this. Everything feels like a waste. How will I support myself? What kind of job can I get now? Nobody wants a kid who took all the easiest classes just obtaining high enough grades to play. Watching the NFL draft instead of being in New York getting drafted was painful, as painful as destroying his leg. But Jack watched every round, memorizing every draft pick, letting it all sink in. Jack realized he had to accept it wasn't going he wasn't going to live the life he once imagined. There was nothing he could do about it. Eventually the Sunday March store owner offered Jack a position to work at the cash register. He gladly took it, considering his current status, there was nothing else he could do. Just like in football, Jack gave it his all, hoping to be promoted, but every day seemed the same. Every day Jack would go to work, bring up a few items and come home. But then everything changed. During work, Jack got a call from Tory Jackson and was so excited to hear from him that he stopped everything he was doing. Hey, Tory. Hey, Jack, I haven't talked to you in forever. How are you doing? I'm fine, I guess. I've just been working at the grocery store since the future I thought I had flew out the window. That was the worst hit I've ever seen. I'm sorry that happened to you. I would have much rather lost the game than to have you get injured. But on a positive note, I have some great news for you. What good news put, could you possibly have for me? Well, since our current starting quarterback is retiring, we are going to need uh, to bring in a rookie. My coach wants you to pick the rookie and become a quarterback coach. He's seen you play, and he thinks you'd be the perfect person to train someone just starting off. What do you think? I'd love to.